the recording now started. Yeah. Okay. So understanding the Nigerian, please, please. Not today. I'm sorry, I'm trying to connect my laptop. I don't know what's going on, but please kindly be patient. I don't know what's going on. Okay, I think this is what I'll do, pending till I can rectify whatever issue is going on with my laptop. So I'll start talking about, I'll be talking from the PowerPoint till I can connect my system, right? So introduction to the topic, the Nigerian tax system. Please, can we all hear me? Kindly um, state in the chat box if, if, okay, you can hear me, all right. Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, so while I connect, I'll, I'll really be glad if I can connect the slides because major, majority of the information I'll be sharing on the slides. Okay, so understanding the Nigerian tax system, introduction. So let me first start with the objective. The objective, at the end of this training, right, participants are expected to understand, number one, the structure of the Nigerian tax system. Number two, the basis of tax administration and compliance requirements in Nigeria. Then number three, tax planning. Number four, tax avoidance versus tax evasion, the thin line. So we all know that taxation is the, gen is the major source of revenue for a government of any nation. Please um, kindly hold on while I connect. I really need these slides to be up. Please kindly pardon me. Please just connect, please. Stop now. Okay, yeah. Recording in progress. Okay. Yeah, thank God. Just um, okay, thank God. <clears throat> I don't know. Can we all see my screen? Um, can we all see my screen? No. Okay. I see the screen, but not oh. showing anything. No, no, ma'am. Okay, it's not I showing anything. Oh, God. Yes. Noun. What about noun? The network has stripped off not again. Not showing anything. Okay, I'm still trying to connect it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so in the meantime, in case we have any questions, right, we can put it in the chat box. We'll not be taking any individual question from people to talk. Recording in progress. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Okay, so this is, yes. So good afternoon, once, uh, good evening once again, everybody. So like I was saying, taxation is the essential revenue generation tool for public service and for government, for any government basically. Okay, government is not doing business, so it is not a profit making organization basically. So how do they get the money they spend? They get the money they spend through tax, right? So taxes are also established by, is it taxes you pay that make them perform their duties, provision of infrastructures, amenities, security, and the like. So some people are of the school of thought that why are we paying tax? Like, why are we paying tax to the government and we are not seeing the benefits? Actually, there are benefits to it because the, the government is providing road for you. They are providing electricity, even if you are paying for it, but it might be at a subsidized rate, right? Then also security, they are paying military, they are paying, they are doing a lot of things basically, right? So don't just say that you're just paying tax. You're not saying, we know that there's a, we know there's corruption basically, but you still need to pay your tax as a civil citizen of a country. 
So we know that taxes are passed by laws through bylaws, decrees, and the likes. Then also, we know that Nigeria operates a decentralized tax system. What does this mean? So you know we have the federal, state, and the LGA. So each of these people or each of these um, each of these tiers of government, they collect their own tax. So at the end of today, we'll know the taxes that federal, federal collect, state collect, and local governments collect. Then also we have the Federal Inland Revenue Service is responsible for all administration of taxes due to the federal government, while the state is responsible for anything relating to state government, then LGAs, anything at the local government level, your council level, and all like that. So I already said earlier that at the end of this training, right, participants are expected to understand number one, the structure of the Nigerian tax system, then number two, the basis of tax administration and compliance requirements in Nigeria, three, tax planning, tax avoidance, and tax evasion. So before we go in, I would like us to tell me the difference, like just drop it in the chat box, right? What do you understand by tax avoidance and tax evasion? I just want to get our idea on what we think are the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. So while I'm waiting for your comments, right? <clears throat> What is taxation? Taxation is the imposition of compulsory levies on the income, capital, or consumption of individuals and entities by government through various agencies. So it is broken down into imposition. Tax is imposed by authorized agencies on taxpayers, mostly the federal, the state, the local government, right? And these agencies use the vested, they use the authority vested on them by the government to force taxpayers to accept this obligation. Then we have compulsory levy. Tax is a mandatory, is mandatory. So accountants in the house, we know we have companies that don't pay tax. They are already criminals, yes, because tax is mandatory. We are obligated by law to pay tax. So you can only, that's what I was asking, that what's the difference between, you see compulsory, compulsory mandatory. That's what I was asking, that what's the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance. That's when you come to know people's mindset on what tax is. You've been avoiding tax or you've been evading tax. We'll come to know that at the end of today's class. So tax is not only imposed on income. You can impose tax on, uh, you can impose tax on people's um, business profits, on people's salary, that's personal income. You can impose tax on goods and services like VAT, right? They can impose tax on shares like dividends, um, director's allowance, and a lot of things. Over time, we'll come to know. Over time, we'll come to know the items that are taxable and like tax taxable items, basically. Then also, we also charge tax on either individuals or entities. So these are the taxpayers. So taxpayers are individuals and entities. Personal income taxes imposed directly on individuals. Why value added taxes indirectly borne by individuals? You know, no matter what, you see, nobody can even say you're not paying tax, even if you're not paying your personal income tax that your company is charging you for, right? You are still paying tax one way or the other because the goods you are buying, the biscuits you are eating, the uh, food you are buying at, like packaged goods, basically, they are, they are VAT. And if you notice too, like now that they will be charging VAT on some market traders too, so they'll pass this tax to you as the final consumer too. Guardian rights. Then also we have various agencies. These are the tax authorities that are responsible for collection of tax. So we have FIRS, we have SIRS, that's the state inland revenue services. You know, for Lagos now, we have LIRS, that's the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service. So they're responsible for collection of tax. Okay. Bye. Okay, while well, I move on to the next slide. Okay. <clears throat> Overview of the Nigerian tax system. So the Nigerian tax system has witnessed. I want too much. I'm coming out of there. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All debt paid in Jesus' I'm name. Come out of there. I'm so sorry for that. Please, when we're on a webinar, right? Let's always try to mute ourselves. Um, as I was saying, the Nigerian tax system has witnessed various changes. So I remember when I was writing my final tax exams in ICAT, 
I think we had over three finance apps we were reading then because you have different finance apps. So yearly, the, the tax laws are being reviewed with the aim of repelling obsolete provision. So you see Finance Act 2021, 2022, Finance Act 2020. So there are a lot of tax laws that have been changed over time, right? Then the most recent changes to the Nigerian tax law was affected by the Finance Bill 2023. It was signed into law by President Mohamed Buhari. So the time is there. Don't let me not bore you with those information. So we, as we said earlier, Nigeria currently operates a decentralized tax system where taxation is enforced by three tiers of government, federal, state, and local governments. Please, um, while I want to quickly pick my charger, they just brought the light so that I can connect my laptop. Battery is running down. Please, you can still just go through what is on the screen while I come back. In the next two minutes, I'll be back. Apologies for that. So as I was saying, so we have, we operate a decentralized tax system. So this means that um, the federal, state and local government each collect their taxes. Yeah. So we also have direct tax and indirect tax. Taxation in Nigeria is classified into direct and indirect taxes. Direct tax are imposed directly on individuals entities and the body rests with the same taxpayer. So we have like personal income tax, company income tax, capital gains tax, ETC, right? Then on like direct tax, the burden of indirect tax is shifted to somebody. Like now in the case of VAT, like I explained earlier, the company, the government is expected that every company, except some companies that are not vatable and some items of goods that are not vatable, so we'll still get to that, right? <clears throat> so the government expects you to charge this tax on their behalf and you expect your consumer or your clients or your customers to pay for this tax. So for instance, an item is 1,000 Naira and we know that the current VAT rate is 7.5%, right? So I charge you 75 Naira, if I'm right. I think that's 75 Naira, yeah. Yeah, that's on five naira. So you'll be paying, instead of paying 1,000 for the price of that particular item, you'll be paying 1,075 naira. So the company has shifted that VAT. Company will not be at that VAT. They will not be at that tax themselves. So they've shifted the, the burden of that tax to someone else, which is the final consumer. So the burden of it is passed to the consumer, as we said, like uh, of valuable goods and services. So Nigeria also employs, <clears throat> excuse me, Nigeria also employs the progressive tax system where tax bodies have direct relationship with income. So if we see the more you earn, the more tax you pay. Then we also have, like what you said, personal income tax pay. I'm, I'm um, fortunate, I don't know if you are still on this call, so I can give you um, post rights. So I can mute anybody. Let me, please, let me try to see if fortunate is on the call so that you can help me mute. Um, I don't think he's on this call, but please let's all try to always mute ourselves whenever we are coming on a call, right? So I'm moving on. So, like we said, um, oh my God. Yeah, I'm still trying to find out what's going on with the background noise, but I think we are fine. Okay, so Nigeria employs the progressive tax system where the bodies have, I already explained that. So, we are moving on to the next slide. Okay, structure of the Nigerian tax system. Like I said, so we operate a decentralized tax system. We are the federal. So people have the opinion that we are we have multiple taxes in Nigeria because of this decentralized system, right? So if you can see, federal is collecting company income tax, withholding tax on companies, PPT, VAT, education tax, capital gain tax. So if you notice, there are some that are relating to, uh, like now this withholding tax to so states who are collecting it, some capital gains tax on individuals. So 
if it, let's say federal is mostly like corporate entities and the likes, and for states, state has to do with personal, like personal income tax of residents. Like if you are staying in Lagos, you pay your PIT in Lagos. If you are staying in Ogun, you pay your PIT in Ogun. Or if for, for withholding tax, if I'm a vendor and probably I was registered in Porta Court, but I'm dealing in Lagos, we remit your tax to Porta Court. That's if you are a business name and not a corporate entity, like maybe you're just a partner or you're just like an individual operating a business. Then we have different types of tax on that. The slides will be shared with everybody so you can go through it properly, right? So we also have the LGAs, they have their own taxes, right? Then if you notice, like I said earlier, federal has to do with more of companies, companies, companies. Then state has to do more with personal, personal, personal. Then LGAs, if you see like shop, kiosk, marriage, even these are marriage thing we do at ECOE and the different kind of, um, what is it called now? We like all them councils now where we go and register our marriages. They are also like local government taxes. Like we have the Koyu registry, we have the Bagada registry, even in Ibadan too, we have different registries there. So these ones fall under LG. And I think this is something we can easily relate to. So the next slide, right? I would like to talk more on this. So we have tax compliance requirements. So the tax here now, we have the company income tax. So the rate, for large companies, we have 30%. Medium companies, we have 20%. Small companies, we have 0%. So for most people that have been attending interviews so far, most companies always test this question like, okay, large companies, their revenue is from when to when? Because I know small companies is 25 million and below. Their medium is 25 million and above to like 100 million. I don't know if I'm like, then large companies, we have like that, like that. So there are breakdowns for these things that companies expect us to know before we attend interviews. And we should also know as, tax professionals, because as an accountant, your company believes they are employing you to be a finance business partner, right? You should know everything about the job you are doing. So most times when a company employs an accountant, they expect you to be their tax guy, they expect you to be their investment guy, they expect you to be their accountant, their financial report, reporting analyst, they expect you to be their FP&A, they expect you to just be their messiah in anything related to finance. So most companies have not really come to understand that Accounting is has different levels, right? Different job roles. Like if you're employing me as an accountant, I'm not yet to do your tax, but they expect you to have tax knowledge. So that's why we're also taking all these trainings to equip you to when you go for interviews. And even for you as a finance professional, you should be vast with um what's it called? You should be vast with tax laws of your of the country we are residing in, right? So that's just a digression from what I was saying. Then we have the frequency of CITs annually, then the due dates within six months of the company's accounting year end. That's then another due date for new companies, either the earlier of six months from its first accounting period or 18 months from the date of incorporation, right? So in our next, the next um, trainer will be coming up to really break this down for us. Like she's talking about registration of companies and the like. So she teach us all this like my own is just like to give an overview of what our tax system is and also we'll be sharing this um slides with us so that we can also read up before the next training then you know we have the penalties for <clears throat> excuse me penalties for non-compliance so it's five thousand in the first month of default five thousand for subsequent months then late or non-payment of cit attracts 10 percent either ways then we can always read it. I don't want us, I don't want to bore us with too much information. Then also we have the personal income tax. So it has graduated rates ranging from seven to 24%. So I believe all of us should be aware. So for this personal income tax, right? The third trainer is coming to teach us on the ABCs of payroll. So she will also elucidate and talk more on this personal income tax. Like she's just talking on anything payroll, anything that just has to do with payroll. My only is just to, as I said earlier, give you an overview of what all the taxes are. Then also we have petroleum profit tax, 65.75% for the first five years of operation, 85% for companies in operation for more than five years, then 50% for companies under PSC, right? Then the due dates, the frequencies annually, the due dates, then the penalties for non-compliance. Then we also have VAT, VAT is 7.5%. Then it's monthly that we remit VAT, like, we all know that all the value added taxes on is not for you as a company. It's not, 
you have to remit it to the government. So we remit VAT to FIRS, that is Federal Inland Revenue Service. Then this should be remitted on or before the 21st day of the following month. So for instance, the VAT that was paid in July, so before the 21st of August, or the VAT that you collected from your customers in July, before August 21st, right, you should have remitted it. So this takes me back to personal income tax. We all know for we that work in companies that remit um, pass, uh, payee, pay as you earn, like you remit your personal income tax for your employees on their behalf to the government. You know that before 10th of the next month, so we always assume that the day salary is paid is the last day of the month. So salaries for June, right, and July that has been paid, that some people are complaining that they've already spent finished, right? The taxes on it should be remitted on or before 10th of August. I don't know if you understand it. Then there's another thing like we call the employer's returns due by 31st of January, where individual returns due by 31st of March. So these things mean that all the returns that they've done for the entire year, so from January to December, you should have remitted it by 31st of January next year. So there's a computation they do. So it's just like a tax audit. They want to check if you remitted all the pay for your staff, right? So you send them the computation, send them the analysis, staff that left, staff that joined you, the taxes you charge on them. And maybe in case over time from January to December, so let's use last year, last year for an example now. January to December 2022, they will ask you to compute and do some computation and analysis. Then they will see how much you've paid versus how much was computed. Then if there's any discrepancy, you pay the balance. So that's what the employer returns is. Then for individual returns, like for your directors, your EDs, non-executive directors, that you also you also have to remit their taxes, right, for them before 31st of March. But for employees, it's 31st of January the next year. So all the employer employer returns for um, January to December in 2023 must be remitted on or before 31st of January, 2024, like doing your computations. And this will also help government to, let's say, catch companies that have not been remitting their uh, employees um, pay, um, taxes, right? Their personal income taxes. So moving on to the next slide. What was going on? Okay. Then we have withholding tax. So let me use this opportunity to explain what withholding tax is. Withholding tax is an advanced tax. So it's like an advanced company income tax. So what the government did is they employed every company as their agents to help them collect this tax on their behalf. Because they know that all these small, small companies, they, they don't pay tax, they're based tax basically, right? So what they do is they set up all these companies, these ven vendors you relate with, to help them collect this tax on their behalf. So the rates, uh, it, it ranges from five to 10%. So this thing is just like an idea for government to capture everybody into their tax net. So you see maybe a, let me use the example of a mechanic by the roadside because most companies now have been mandated to only relate with companies that have their tax identification number. So if you as a vendor, you don't have tax identification number, I won't be dealing with you, right? But you know, we still have some things that are not really following the rules and the laws. But this helps government to capture everybody that I that are not in the tax net. So imagine like a street mechanic, what does he know about tax? But if I'm remitting for a service, probably a service charge, I'll have to deduct 5% from it because he's an individual. Or if his company is registered, but it depends on the modality of whatever so if it's a company, depending on the rates for withholding tax. So PwC, EY, they have this tax card that they use to tell you that, okay, if you are withholding tax for a director, okay, individual or a company, is that 5%, 10%? So we need to familiarize ourselves with all those um, publications that these big fours do. So when you go for interviews, you are updated with, even, even not for interviews, even for your companies, when uh, consultants will come or when the need arises, right? So you know what you are saying, you are giving them the right information part time. So there's a, I would have tried to, let me see if I can um, bring that PwC tax card out. But before the end of this, I'll show, I also, let me, let me, let me just, um, 
I'm coming. Uh, let me see if I can bring out the PWC tax card. Um, okay. Kindly hold on PWC tax card and holding tax. So these are the things we really need to familiarize ourselves with the rates and everything. So you that probably we have an uh, account receivable person in our midst, sorry, an account payable person. So you know you deal with payments. So you need to familiarize yourself with withholding tax because you need to charge withholding tax on some vendors' um, contract fee, right? So you need to familiarize yourself that my deduct, how much am I deducting? So I don't over deduct or under deduct because where you under deduct, right? The company will be the one to pay for it. And when you over deduct, you have to have you'll be having reconciliation issues with them. That's when vendors start calling you that you over deducted on them, pay me the balance and everything. So as a finance professional, you really need to let me just look for withholding tax rates in Nigeria. You need to familiarize yourself with all these tax rates, right? Okay. Mm. Uh -huh, yeah. PWC. Okay, let me try to share my screen. While that is waiting, um, I think I've gone way past my. Um, okay, so we have capital gains tax. So while that is loading, it's still loading. So we have capital gains tax, 10% by annually. Then we told tax is monthly. So people that remit with holding tax, we know that. We pay it together with our VAT on or before the 21st day of every succeeding month, right? And there are penalties for it, penalty for late filing 25%. Then in the first month, it occurs then 5% for subsequent months. So if you fail to uh, remit your withholding tax, you pay 25% the next month, then subsequent month you start paying 5,000, right? Then we have capital gains tax, it's 10%, you pay it by annually. Education tax, 3% on. When you're also remitting your CIT, that's your company income tax, you also paid, so it's annual. The first offense against the act is liable on a conviction fine of one million or a term of six months imprisonment or both. Then basis of tax administration, I'm still waiting for, yes. Okay, I would like to share a new screen now. So on that we told you tax, yep, 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 yep. I don't know if my name, okay, yes, it's already showing. I understand. So now if you see this PWC tax card, right? So if you see we have, we told you tax is applicable on specified transactions. Then if you see types of payments, so if you are paying dividend, interest and rent for a company is 10%. If it's withholding tax for an individual for dividend, interest or rent, it's still 10%. Then we have director's fee for companies is not applicable. Then for individuals, you charge 10%. Then for hire of equipment, probably you hired a forklift, you hired one major equipment you use in your company. Then it's 10% for companies and it's also 10% for individuals. Also, we have royalties for companies is 10%, then for individuals is 5%. Then we have commission, consultancy fee, technical and service fee. It's 10% for company and is 5% for individuals. Also, let me talk more on this consultancy fee. So for instance, if you are using an outsource HR, right? And if, it's, if the HR company is registered as a company, you charge 10%. But well, if the HR company is registered as a business name, probably as a partnership, you charge 5% because you are dealing with individuals, right? But if it's registered as a company, you charge 10%. So account payables people to call, kindly take notes. Then we also have management fees. Management fees for companies, 10%. What total tax for individuals is 5%. Then we have constructions too as well. We have it's 2.5% for companies. You need to take note of this so that you don't overcharge construction companies that your company or your construction company vendors that your company contracts with. It's 2.5% for companies because of how large their transaction is. So you may be having construction contract of over 50 million. So you, have, you can only charge with only tax the tune of 2.5%. So for individuals, you charge 5% because those ones are just minor, minor contract of probably five to like 10 million or something. But because of how large those uh, construction contract is with company to company, that's why 
they are charging 2.5 percent to not even erode the entire profit on the company, the construction company that we contracted. Then this is the one we are all familiar with, contract other than sales in the ordinary course of business. So for instance, you bought, um, what is the word now? You bought um, inventories, you bought goods and other things. So it's 5% both for companies and both for individuals. I just said I should quickly go through that. Then you can always, um, I can drop this in the comment box to help people that are, help people with it and all. So I'll be going back to my slide. I'll share the link in the comment section. Okay, so basis of tax administration. Um, so tax administration involves, so I'm dropping the link for everybody on that PwC tax card I just opened for withholding tax. You can also check their site for more information on all. Then basis of tax administration. Tax administration involves registration, assessment, returns, collection, compliance monitoring, compliance enforcement, sa sanction, taxpayers' education and awareness, and any other activities that can improve, that can improve, sorry, um, let me try to mute somebody, that can improve um, the efficiency of taxpayer rights. I don't know, somebody's video was on, so I'm trying to, I'm just do that. So we have registration. So this is the first step in tax administration. It is done by submitting relevant information as required by the tax authority. So this is where you get your tax identification number. This is what Odola will be taking us next week. Um, let me confirm the date, probably next week. I'll confirm the data and also relay that with us later. So she'll be talking more on registration. Then we also have assessments. Assessments, tax authorities assess taxpayers to taxes within their jurisdiction. So if federal state governments will assess uh, people that are under them, like taxes that are under them, then the basis of assessments, tax rates, you know, we have basis period and over. That's not the purpose of today's class. Today's class, I just doing an overview of everything. Then subsequent tax and uh, subsequent classes will now dwell more on these things. Then we have basis period and tax deduction as stipulated in tax um, statute. Then we also have returns. So when you hear returns, this is actually the money you are paying to the government, right? Don't let somebody bamboozle you with a lot of English or some tax um, jargons, right? Returns is just the money you are paying, the taxes you are paying to the government. So tax authorities usually require taxpayers to file information as required by the relevant tax authority on a periodic basis as the need arises. And also we have collection, mode of tax remittance is usually determined by the relevant tax authority. So they'll tell you how they want you to pay your tax and how they want to collect this tax. Then we have compliance monitoring. So this has to do with tax authorities monitoring. This is where tax audit comes into play. They come to check how much taxes you've paid so far. Are you adhering to relevant tax laws? This is now where we know who is avoiding tax and who is evading tax rights. Then compliance enforcement. This is when tax authorities will now force you, not really force, but enforce it upon the taxpayer to pay. So this is where tax um penalties come to play. When you don't pay your tax, they will put penalties on you. And in some cases where you don't even, where you are um, avoiding taxes, you might be, apart from fine, you can be jailed. Like one of my lecturers say, you can be jailed for not paying your tax, right? So, so the next slide, uh, I don't know what's going on with this. That's my system. Okay, while well, we are waiting for my system to catch up. Okay, yeah. So we have tax planning and management. So what tax planning is, is tax planning means that you are planning your tax in such a way that you are paying less by taking advantage of loopholes. So this is where we'll also be talking about tax avoidance and tax evasion, right? So tax planning is a legal method of reducing your tax burden. So instead of you not even running away from paying the tax at all, what tax planning does is, okay, let us plan our finances. This is also part of treasury management. Like, let us plan our finances, the company finances, such a way that 
we budgeted for the tax we pay throughout the year. You can plan it. You know the amount of employees you have. You know what your income was last year. You can project, you can forecast what your income is this year and know the CIT you will pay. You can know the uh, personal income taxes you'll be paying, right? But withholding tax is just something that you might not be able to plan totally because you don't know the volume of transactions you'll be having with vendors. But it's still something you can still like gauge and you can still plan around like, okay, maybe this is like the minimum or this is the maximum we can pay, right? Then tax planning is also the systematic planning of, like I said, financial and business affairs by adhering to the taxation provision in a way that complete benefits can be availed of all applicable deductions. So what this simply means is that you are taking advantage of deductions, exceptions, allowances, and rebates. So but the government knows that they want you to be tax compliant. So they'll do things that will ensure that, yes, they'll give you deductions, exceptions, allowances. So, you know, we have a lot of things like we have the free tax zone, where if you're in the free trade zone, you are not paying any tax. Then we also have things like allowances. Then we have, um, sorry. Then we also have things like, um, like basically allowances are just used to reduce your tax, um, what is it called now? Your tax, your tax payable, like the tax you are supposed to pay to them. Then the next, this is, so I want to go into the chat box and see who got my question correctly. Um, okay, some people are already asking question. Yes, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm trying to go through the chat box. Okay, let me see. So, the question I asked, I don't see we all got it. Okay, tax avoidance is legal. Why tax evasion is illegal, correct? Tax avoidance is generally a legal way that taxpayers can avoid paying taxes. Tax avoidance is a legal way of not paying tax. Why tax evasion is illegal? Wow, well, we have scholars in the house. Tax, um, tax avoidance is intentional. And I think we all tried in the comments session, right? So I'll still be expecting more questions in the comments session. So somebody is asking that, is it possible we get this note after class? Definitely, the slides will be shared with everybody. And I see that all of us understand what tax avoidance and tax emission is. So like we all said in the comment section, we said tax avoidance is legal. Tax evasion is legal, right? So tax avoidance is any legal emphasis on legal method used by taxpayer to minimize the amount of income tax owed. So we have tax credits, deductions, and we have loopholes within the tax laws. So these loopholes means you can take advantage of some decrees, some laws in the act. So if you go to probably the finance tax act, you go to the, con um, what's this word? You go to the constitution, you go to the CAC files, and a lot of things like that, then you can see how you can take advantage of all these things, right? Then also, Tax avoidance can be prioritized by can be achieved by prioritizing investment in tax advantages. So, like buying federal government bonds and investments in some certain industries can get tax credits. So, also when you buy some, I think it's just a recent that they scrap investment allowance. Yes. So before you know, the government used to give investment allowance when you buy plant and machineries to help your business like plants and machineries assets for your business but now it has been scrapped but we have other things that they've given us allowance of like all your capital qualifying capital expenditure basically so any assets you buy that is related to helping your company make profits that is related like any qualifying capital expenditure like huge amount of money you've invested in um purchasing assets basically you can they, they give um allowances on you so we have rates ranging from like 15 to like 25 percent so it depends on the estimated useful years the tax written down value and some other things there basically then also we have tax evasion occurs when a person or business legally avoids paying their tax liability so this one now tax evasion is legal tax avoidance is legal so tax evasion is when you even say you're not even paying tax or when companies don't even remit you know, some companies even deduct the um, they deduct the tax from the uh, staff, but they don't even remit it at all. So those ones that are doing it legally, then the ones that don't even do anything, like even maybe businesses that are operating in Nigeria that don't even pay company income tax, and they meet the criteria. They are not small companies. Probably some of them they are.
revenue is even more than 25%. So they ought to be paying tax. They are not even paying right. Then also, tax evasion includes false declaration of profit. So this one is even worse because when they come for tax audit here in soup, this one now, you made, let's say you made 10 million in a year. Then you told them you made 5 million. So they charge you only on, they charge you coming income tax on only the 5 million. So this one, when they come for tax audit, they will eat you with a lot of fines. They will eat you with a lot of, like even going through the process, you even wish that you didn't even falsely declare your profit because they will now go through the nitty gritty of your books to find out more profits that you've been evading or that you've been hiding under the scheme of some expenses you incurred and all like that. Then also tax evasion involves intentionally misinterpreted, intentional misinterpretation of one's true financial status. So this is also for individuals like, you know, there's something that uh, Mr. Taiwo really said now that once they link your NIN, once the tax authority can get your NIN, they can know how much is in your bank account, they can know how much assets you have. So before they do this, you know, people always come out and do declaration, like they'll tell you that this is what they're earning and they'll hide some of their assets abroad. They will hide, because they do this for politicians, where they tell them to come and declare their assets and all. So when they now to charge you on those things, you've already hidden or you've given them a false representation of what you are. If you are worth like 1 billion currently, then because you've hidden some of your assets offshores, you've done a lot of, um, you've done a lot of window dressing to your financial status, right? Then you now tell them that, oh, as I know, it's only 10 million your worth instead of the 1 billion your worth, right? So this one too is tax evasion. So on the next slide, um, I think I'm done. So the last thing here is, in an attempt to avoid tax, most business unknowingly fall into the trap of tax evasion. So you just need to ensure that you put your house in order, put your businesses in order to ensure that as you're evading tax, which is, as you're avoiding tax, sorry, which is the legal form of um, tax um, um, planning, you, you don't fall into the trap of tax evasion. So I'll be looking into the comment section for questions, right? Because I'm already done. So I'll be expecting more questions in the, um, okay. Yes, are we getting the recordings to our mails? No, the recordings will be shared on the WhatsApp group. I don't, I don't, all the recordings will be shared on the WhatsApp group. So you know the way Zoom does it now, they'll send us the link and also the password. So we'll share it with everybody. If you're not on our link, if you're not on our WhatsApp group, you can just let us know now so that we can share the WhatsApp group. So the recordings will definitely be shared on the WhatsApp group. Then he said, do we deduct withholding tax for business name? Or and partnership. I think I already explained this. So we told it as for partnership or business name. Like I said, you don't treat them like companies. There has to be five percent. So it depends on the nature of transaction. That's why I brought out that withholding tax card. Maybe I should also share it again because I also explained for business name. Business name. The law does not see business name being registered as a business name as a company. They see them like a partnership or an individual, right? So you you deduct withholding tax definitely, and that's where. I brought the example of like if you are using an HR outsourcing firm, then maybe it was registered as a business name. You only charge five percent on their consulting fee, right? You won't charge them ten percent. Partnerships too, you charge them basically. Then somebody is asking that I think the CIT penalty has changed is fifty k for the first month and twenty five k subsequently as the uh, okay. We can always Google that out. Nobody is a compendium of knowledge. We're all learning every day. So I can also check CIT penalty in Nigeria. Um, so that we are all clear. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So um, failure to file CIT, and this is as of 24th of February, 2023. So this is the most recent. Penalty for non-compliance non is attract a penalty of 25%, 25,000 for the first month then 5,000 for subsequent months. I hope I've been able to answer that person's um, question. Um, okay, I think so. Mr. Inamdi, I hope we are clear now, like based on this PwC tax card that is showing me here now, it's 25,000 and 5,000, right? Then how do you identify companies registered as a business name? 
Um, you ask most, okay, so for some companies, right? They always say some companies have pioneer status. I don't know if you've ever come across those kind of companies where in the first four or five years, you don't charge them tax. You cannot even charge them withholding tax. They will send you their pioneer status certificate. So for a company registered as a business name, you can always ask them for their CAC certificate to see if they're registered as a business name. You know, in this time now, everybody needs to come clean because it's a matter of compliance. Because if you don't charge these companies the rights at the right rate, you'll be the one to bear it. So imagine a company that is registered as a business name now comes to your company and lies. Okay, no, a company that is registered as a company now lies that they register as a business name because they want you to charge them 5% instead of 10%. If the um, government comes for tax audit, that's the tax audit. The FRS guys will, will slam you with the many 5%. You have to pay the balance, basically. So you can always ask them for their CAC. Um, and there's a way you can actually check. Yes, their team number will differentiate too. I'm sure there's a difference between their TIN and all like that. Then, can a company in debt pay tax? Most companies, most especially companies who use run, tax is not a uh, tax is on profit. Like we said earlier, when we were discussing the meaning of tax, tax is not only a balance sheet item. Debt is a balance sheet item. So you can actually incur debt and still make profit. Except if your profit is eroded by your interest on the debt, that's when you don't have any profit to uh, you don't have any profit to declare. And we all know that accounting profit is different from Tax, taxable profit because some of the expenses you allow in accounting tax does not allow it they'll tell you that it's a, it's a allowable expense they'll tell you this one is allowable this one is not it's not allowable right so it, that is not a question is you are dealing with profits right somebody is asking that can a company in debt pay tax of course if the company is profitable you can pay tax Loan is a balance sheet item it's not a sopl item it's not a statement of profit or loss item we, we are dealing with profits, not tax, not debt. So the only issue where the, comp the company may not pay taxes, where probably the company is a small company and the revenue is up to 25 million, right? Or it's not up to 25 million, like it's within the threshold of that 25 million, so it's not remit tax. Then somebody saying I'm not in the WhatsApp, but I'll try to share the link to the WhatsApp group. Then um, for withholding tax, for an individual vendor that does not reside in Lagos, where are we to pay their withholding tax since the vendor does not reside in Lagos? Okay, like I said, I also explained this while I was, okay, I think some people have already, uh, so Sunday already replied that you pay it to the states where they reside. Yes, so for instance, if the vendor is paying in Port Harcourt, you pay to Port Harcourt inter internal inland revenue service or internal revenue service. If the person is residing in Ogun, since it's an individual, you pay to Ogun State Internal Revenue Service, right? Then, please, can you elaborate more on how to legally reduce tax liability? Okay, while I'm waiting for that, um, well, I'm trying to I'm trying to get the WhatsApp group link. Mm -hmm. Let me elaborate this. Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to keep track on the questions. So, okay, okay, hey, somebody will, yeah, Mr. You can, okay, you can pay, you can check them on CAC portal for the person that asked that question on how to identify a registered business name. And most of the business names are identified as BN. So, for where, a, where is we told the tax of vendor based in FCT paid? Of course, this speaks to FCT IRS. Like before, before the um, advention of FCT IRS, we pay to FRS normally. But now that FCT has their own internal revenue service, we pay to FCT IRS. I don't know. It's someone question on my phone, but I can't find it on my laptop. Where? Where is this question? Okay, I've seen it. Um, let me scroll up. Okay, so. Sonia is asking that, please, can you elaborate more on how to legally reduce tax liability? I think I explained that, like, taking advantage of allowance, that's where we have capital allowance. Maybe government gave you tax credit, right? Then also, um, there are a lot of things you can do. So it depends on the technicality of your business. Like, if you're into agriculture and some other things, government giving, like, some incentive, maybe on 50% of their 
capital expenditure. Like there are just a lot of things. So you read more on that on how to reduce the uh, your capital your tax liability. Then how do you identify somebody? Okay, I think we've answered that question. So where is withholding tax? Okay, we've answered that. Does an audit firm pay pay? You know, audit firms are registered as um, partners, like partnership, right? So most of them, so each partner, you have to remit their payee. Then also for their staff, so you have to remit payee for their staff. Um, I'm trying to copy the WhatsApp link. Then for withholding tax, how do you pay it? Do we need the recipient's time? Of course, you have to. Okay, so one thing with this thing is most companies pay free money to the government because when you don't have TIN, there's no way the government can credit that amount to your tax ID. Like, for instance, I imagine me, I, 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 I withheld 50K. Okay, let me use a huge amount. I withheld 500K on your contract. Then there's no TIN there. Then when I'm remitting my withholding tax as at 21st of the next month, your money has gone, put it up, right? Like, you just gave government free money because you didn't attach any identification to you didn't ident you didn't attach any identification. What is that? So you didn't attach any means of identification to that amount you withheld and that you want to pay. So just like somebody is paying money for you to the government on your behalf and they didn't drop your account number. So your TIN is your account number at your at the government agency. So now they help you to pay 500,000, but there's no account number. You just gave government a free money, right? So you need, that's why at a point, companies now start dealing with only vendors that have tax identification number to help their remittance to be smooth and seamless. Because there can be a situation where by see a small business that maybe their income, their annual income is never up to 25 million. Then I did a contract with them and now we did 500,000. They can use that to reduce their tax liability in the future. So, for instance, if their CIT for that year is not like, let's say, it's like um, one million, that five hundred thousand for withholding tax, they can use it to reduce it. So that's what withholding tax does. But when the person does not have CIN, so that's if you are paying double money to government, you pay your CIT, then you also pay free money to the government. So you're just dashing government money. So get their uh, what was it called? Get their tax identification number. So I've already dropped the WhatsApp link. Somebody is asking for WhatsApp pay. So how do you differentiate between withholding tax payable to FRS and SRS? Like we said, mostly FRS always deal with entities. They deal with corporation, corporate bodies. The SRS deals more with individuals. So in that breakdown, in the, let me share my screen. So like we said, in that, um, what is the word? In our slide, I'm trying to share it. New share, okay. All right. So, like we said here at the beginning of the class, so we have the, so you know for federal governments, only company income tax. If you see most of the things, they are company, company, company. Then for states. You see, you see for individuals, 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 individuals. But for federal, you see more companies, companies, companies. So whenever it comes to your mind, so states has to deal with individuals, business name, partnership, and that's to do with individual. But for federal, you see more companies, companies, non-resident, more of I, I don't know how to put it. Then you also see personal income tax for FCT, but this one too, it can go to FCT IRS. I think they are still uh debating on that so while i'm still checking i think i answered that person's question so for withholding tax how do you pay it do we need the recipient's time of course you need the recipient's time i think i already answered that question is as if you are giving government free money please in the list you shared on withholding tax medical is not there has it been removed if no what are the rate of withholding tax i think it depends on what, what, what do you mean by medical to start with? Okay, yeah, so somebody is asking that, can a transaction attract both VAT and what withholding tax? So I'll leave that medical question and answer it later. So for a transaction, yes, you can have both VAT and withholding tax. One does not stop one. And um, while the other taxes is, is already on, 
So like I explained, okay, I'm buying a plate for 1,000. The cost, the price is 1,000, but the company now added 7.5% withholding tax. So if I'm a vendor to vendor, right, they'll charge, um, they'll charge 10 percent okay let me they'll charge five percent with holding tax as if it's an inventory item maybe contract or supply so they want to supply me hundred thousand pieces of or let, let me say hundred pieces of plates so hundred times one thousand that's hundred thousand right then they'll charge with holding tax of seven five or that amount that's VAT. sorry they'll charge VAT of 7.5 percent so let us do a, a, a mathematics because uh with holding tax does not you stop VAT or VAT, you must always collect VAT. So with all these tax will now depend on the nature of the transaction. Like I used in that PWC tax card. I hope we all understand. So if somebody is charging you VAT, some people use the reasoning that if a vendor is charging me VAT, I can deduct with all these tax. But still, you still need to go to your tax table and check, okay, what type of transaction, what is the nature of transaction I'm having with this person, right? Like we said, yeah, what's the nature of the transaction you're having with this person? Is it um, consultancy management? What type of payment are you making to this person? So does it fall under interest, directors, free IR? So use this your tax card to determine if you'll be deducting withholding tax or VAT. One does not stop one. The fact that you are paying VAT does not stop you from remitting, uh, from deducting withholding tax from a contract fee. And we all know that you cannot charge withholding tax on VAT. What you charge is on the base amount. So like now for that, my 100,000, that is the price of that thing. I'm charging, depending on if it's a business or an individual. So let's say it's a business now. Okay, even if it's a business or an individual, it's contract on the other, is in other than sales in the ordinary course of business. So I'll charge 5%, right? So that means from that, my 100,000, they'll charge me, they'll deduct 5% and remit on my behalf to government. So they are removing 5,000. So 100,000 minus 5,000, that's 95,000. They employ the VAT of 75. So they, are, they will now pay me 97,000 plus. So me as, sorry, me, I'm paying them now. I think I've mixed it all up. Let me, let me use the Excel for this thing. So I'm trying to, let me do scatter. Okay, I've not, let me just try to open Excel to work on this, right? Coming kindly, hold on. What was going on? Okay, all right. <sighs> okay, so let me now be building the scenario as I am. Um, so now we have two vendor. We have vendor A and okay. Let me use vendor and customer. Or let me use if I use customer. That is vendor to vendor. Okay, let me use vendor to vendor. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to. Okay, yeah, I think that's fine. So let me open Excel. So this Excel. Okay. And we also we are open to contributions from other people too. Okay, somebody has said medicals are exempted. Please, if you have like more input to add to this is fine. The floor is open for, you can just raise up your hand if you have input so that by 7.15, we are done with this session. So, you can just I raise up your hand. I have input. You need to unmute yourself, please use the, um, what's it called? Like raise, we don't want the um, class to be all modded up. So you can just raise up your hand and I'll call you to speak, please. You can just use the raise up your hand um, feature then, I'll, or you can just say it in the chat box that you want to speak, then I would, I would open it up for you to speak, right? So, share, share, share. So, in case if anybody has like um, input for us, if we have any um, closing remarks and anything, so I'm trying to build the case for. Uh, the VAT, right? Or well, probably at the next. Okay, let me just be concerned. Yeah. Okay, so now, for instance, okay, okay, Sunday has raised up. I think I even want Sunday to help us with the withholding tax and VAT issue. So you can speak Sunday. 
Good evening. 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 Good from that um, on medical items. So I would just like to chip in something. So in tax, we have um, goods, goods that, that are exempted. Um, we also have goods that are zero rated. So the difference between zero rated goods and exempted goods, are, zero rated goods are goods that normally by law, you are meant to charge tax as we told in tax on the item, but based on the nature of the transaction, the rate for the tax is 0%. E.g. like when you buy basic food items, maybe when you buy basic food item from your vendor, normally you are buying from your vendor, you're supposed to supply, you're supposed to charge withholding tax when paying the vendor, but due to the nature of the transaction, you don't charge VAT, so the rate for the, this, for the particular transaction, it's zero. That's for zero rated goods. Why exempted? Exempted is by law, you are not meant to charge VAT or tax on any occasion, no matter the nature of the transaction, whether it's service, supply, because in tax, we have three natures of transaction. We have supply, we have contract of supply, we have contract of service, and we also have um, over the counter transaction. So in case of zero rated over the counter transaction falls under it because this transaction you know that is over the counter you just go to the vendor maybe local vendor you buy item from them and you don't charge them with the tax because they will never agree in the first place that's for zero rated why for exempted like medical items if when you're trying to buy drugs you're trying to buy something from a pharmaceutical, com pharmaceutical company it's at zero it's exempted from law that you don't charge tax on any occasion. So that's just my own little contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Sunday, for that wonderful contribution. Um, I, I think Toyo still raised up his hand. Toyo, can you um, take the floor? I'll be missing very soon. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Howie. Thank you for the opportunity. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? We can. Yes, we can. Yes, we Great. can. Great. Great. Um, thank you Ian, for this opportunity and thank you for what you are doing in the community. And um, what I just want to add is the fact that when it comes to the coding, especially contracts other than the uh, ordinary course of business, what it means is that, for instance, um, a manufacturing company supplies another manufacturing company. Let me use my organization as an example. My organization deals with um, a processed cocoa, raw cocoa, and then being an agricultural produce is bad exempted. So the local farmers cannot charge us back. So also, we can um, charge back, but um, what we do is, the as we export those cocoa at the end of the day because it's a semi produce, so we export it. So, it being an export, rules, we don't charge back. But when we are selling to our local customers, we charge back in that regard. So, let me now go back to the contract rather than the ordinary course of business. Where, uh, when at the manufacturer, when there is no third party involved, maybe you approach a company to supply you goods, and that company, their major core business is that produce that you want from them. When, when such supplier gives when such supplier gives you their invoice, you are not expected to charge the holding on them because that is their main business. There is no third party involved in that regard. However, if there is another third party that when to purchase that, 
If such if another person goes to that company and then supply that particular goods that that company is actually producing, and that person now charge you back, so you are expected to charge them because there is an intermediary involved. So that's just what I want to chip in. And also, when it now comes to reporting, two things has to be involved: the nature of the transaction and then the entity involved. That is why whenever any suppliers want to engage in any transactions, I encourage you, especially accountants, to make sure that that supplier registered with your company. Like for instance, now you must have their form, um, form seven, form two, CAC, and their VAT certificate. And um, if applicable, there is a form that you must give them that they must fill, which contains their details, their team number, their VAT number, every of their details. So in such doing, you'll be able to now track the, the core business of the entity and also the name of the entity, what they are actually, what, what, they, what they register for. If it's an entity, if it's a, I mean, a small business, if it's a large business, you will know through that aspect. So like I was saying, two things must involve the nature of the transaction and the entity itself. If the nature of the transaction depends on supplies, for instance, and that supplies, the person I charge you service charge on it. Your VAT should be on the service charge, not on the base amount. What I mean by that, for instance, now you contract your vehicle, your company vehicle out, and the person I charge you, okay, you, you buy a ring, you buy plugs, you buy this, and the person I charge, charge um, attach the receipt of all those things that you bought, and they now give you charging him, um, adding is uh, the cost attached to it. So what you are going to do in that regard is that you are going to deduct the amount he gives in that receipt. For instance, now the total bill he gives you is 80,000. And he said you bought some items. He attached the receipt of that cash items to it. So in that regard, you are going to deduct the, for instance, the total receipt he attached to is 50,000. So 50,000 minus 80,000, the remaining percentage, which is 30,000, is what you are going to VAT, what you are going to charge your withholding on. Withholding is basically being charged on profits or service charge. But in a case whereby there is no profit, there is, there is no, the person did not attach the receipt of the item he bought, or there is no service charge, that means that's when you are not going to base it on your base amount. I just want to add that. And also, the last thing I want to add is withholding is, charged, yeah, withholding is not charged on cash. Like, which is what my other colleague said, it's not charged on over the counter. For instance, now you go to one restaurant or you send one of your staff to go and purchase something and you give him cash. Or the person will give you the bill and he said this bill is on cash purchase or cash receipt. You are not expected to charge the you know, because it's on over the counter transaction. So basically, we told him is based on the nature of the transaction and the entity involved. That's my contribution. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Toyasi. Really appreciate that input. I think somebody is trying to, um, trying to see. Uh, okay, can I, you're me, by your me. <laughs> okay. Can I, can I add, can I add a little uh, more Annie, to? Sorry, Anne said, Anne raised up. Okay, 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 you can go. Then after Mr. Yomi, um, Anne can go on. Hello, good evening, everyone. Hello. Hello, good, good evening, evening, everyone. Sir. So basically, <laughs> Madam Inda, Inda, I have said it all. But I would like to just give some scenario understanding about this differentiation between differentiation between business name and company name. When it comes to company name, you see the CIT, VAT, WHT. They are, they are all paid to the FIRS. But when we talk about business name, anybody that register under ventures, enterprises, blah, 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 they are not expected to pay CIT, but they are expected to pay personal income tax. After they might have the thoughts, their, their income from their liability, whatever they have, they will charge 70% 70, 70, 70 of 300,000. So whatever they have left, it will be paid to their state internal revenue but that does not stop them from paying VAT WHT. I don't know if people are getting it. So their their VAT is to be paid to um, FIRS if their if their if their service or products are vatable. 
But where we see WHT, WHT are to, if there be business name, WHT are to pay to, to the states. But when you want to pay this thing, you don't need to go to your FRS portal. That's why you see some company, it is good, both business name and company, it is good to have your login details for both FRS and states. So if you are dealing with a company, if a business name is dealing with a company, you have to remit WHT to this, to the FRS. But if you are dealing with a business name to business, you have to remit to the states by demanding for the adding being, let's say you are dealing with a legal state, some somebody or whatever, and is registered under a business name, you need to require to ask for their complaint tax ID. So they will just provide you. There's what we call in a, in, in the next section, you see how we create so many login details, how to arrive at. Uh, your company IDs with the LRS, whatever. So they will just provide you their tax ID. It comes with C, iPhone, the blah, blah, blah number. So you go to the LRS portal, you upload, you download the, the um, WST schedule, you input the company name, the tax ID, the amount, then you upload. So that's how it works. So we should not get it frustrated or confused that, ah, who am I going to pay this money to? Who am I going to pay this money that? But I believe in the next section, we'll all get it right. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, thank you, Mr. Yomi. Um, and Anne will be our last contributor for this night, then we call it a wrap. And please kindly go on, good evening. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Anne, dear. I'm speaking from Lagos. Okay, I want to um, talk on, someone asked a question, um, how if a legal way to reduce a company's tax body. So I just want to talk a little on that. And I stand to be corrected if my contribution is not in line. So someone can as well correct me. So um, me, from my own side, what I, the way, Part of the how to reduce your tax burden is by one, incurring some capital expenditure, and then doing some charity donation to government-approved charity institutions, and then in, through loan capitals. Like we know, you have equity capital and we have loan capital. So when you finance your business, it's through loan capital. Is you can recoup it. Um, during tax uh, computation. Then, um, okay, this, basically these are the three things I want to ship in. Because when you are computing your CIT, we, uh, something like capital expenditure and charity donations are an allowable deductions before arrive, arriving at your CIT. So this is what I want to ship in. If I'm, I'm wrong, someone should also correct me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Anne. Um, thank you so much for giving us this perspective. Because this was the question somebody was asking that, um, can I use my debt to reduce my tax or something? So I think the interest rate on the loan is tax allowable, like it's an allowable expense. So the more debt you have, and it will increase your interest rates. We also help you reduce your tax liability because you can easily deduct your interest from your earnings before interest and tax, right? So it's to reduce the amount of tax you'll be paying to the government. Thank you so much, and for that perspective. Thank you so much. Okay, somebody is asking a question that we've not, yeah, yet to clarify if the same service or products can, yes, now we already said that is we can, but, and, how do I explain this, right? I think, I don't know if Sunday can help me out here because we've worked on this together before. Like, VAT, withholding tax does not, VAT does not stop you from paying withholding tax. A, a, a contract or a service and product can have both VAT and withholding tax. So, withhold, uh, VAT is compulsory. Like, it's on the goods or services. Is VAT is a consumption tax on any goods or service. That one is always there and you have to remit it to the government, except like he mentioned, if they are tax, if they are VAT exempt, that you don't have to pay VAT on them. That's a different thing. But most, 
you can have like most of even the transactions that we charge with holding tax on, they also have VAT, right? So it's not as if one must not have one. You just just understanding number one, like Sunday said, and what Anne said. So then I think your uh, uh, what's it called? Thursday said the same thing. Number one, understanding the nature of the transaction, understanding the type of payment it is. Is it to a company? Is it to an individual? And the like. So it's not it's not a one cap fit all scenario. Like each type of contract we determine, or which type of transaction we determine the um solution to provide for that kind of situation. Like what type of contract are you dealing with? We determine if you are with, withholding tax, if you are withholding tax, yes, or if you have to add VAT to it, like is it a VAT exempt? So it's only items that are VAT exempt that you don't even add VAT on, right? So I don't know if that answers your question. So thank you, everybody. We've come to the end of today. So I'm trying to get the exact dates for next week so that I don't tell us a wrong thing because some people were telling me that they thought today's class would be by five. So I guess it was the first link we shared, right? That made it look like five. So next week, August 12th, I think that, I don't know when that falls. I'll check my calendar to be sure. So August 12th, mm -hmm. 6 p.m. next week, we'll be having... Odola Ewetola ACA and she'll be talking on registering how to register a company, like the steps on registering a company. Let me just get the full details on our okay. Hello, oh, sorry, sorry, excuse me. I want to sorry, I want to put in or chip in something that the last speaker <laughs> just said now. That okay. um, interest interest on the um, loan is um is an allowable expense, yes. For okay. interest on related party transactions, they are not allowable. I remember last year, our um, the tax authority did disallow it because of related party transactions. Because our okay. parents company and I, we are related. So every loan we collect from them, they disallow it. But interest, uh, interest on not related party transactions, maybe finance costs from any other company that does not relate to your own company, that one is allowable. I just want to correct that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, so next week, we are having Odunola by 12. Let me confirm the day it falls on. OK, 12 is on Saturday. So we are having Odunola on Saturday, right? So she'll be coming next week, Saturday. I want to get a training topic. So she'll be coming to teach us. Uh, let me look for it. Please kindly hold on. Okay. So she'll be coming on the 12th, Saturday, 6 p.m. to teach us how to register a new company and its tax and its staff with the tax authority, FRS or LIR. So this will come to know business name. We'll come to understand company and um, tax IDs, all those kind of things. So we look forward to having you and thank you for joining us. I'll be stopping the recording. It's 6 p.m. It's 6 p.m. Thank you so much for joining us today. The recording will be shared on.